How's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the Corsair Xenion Flex 45-inch bendable gaming monitor. Thank you to Best Buy for sending me this product for free to review. This monitor's model number is 45WQHD240. To unbox this behemoth, you'll want to lay the box on its side, then remove the accessories on top, which include the power brick, display port cable, HDMI cable, USB-C to USB-C cable, power cable, and USB-C to USB-A cable. In the middle, this paper envelope contains the safety and warranty information, as well as calibration report. Next, remove the stand base, then carefully slide the monitor out of the box and remove the styrofoam padding and foam sleeve. The base of the stand has a 24 inch wide spread, is hefty, and made of metal. On the bottom are six rubber pads along the underside with gaps in between to improve traction. There is a handle at the back to assist in lifting the panel when assembled, and the wide triangular shape of the stand helps prevent accidental tip over. In the middle is the set screw for attaching the panel to the base. You'll also see two stabilizing posts on top of the stand, which will slot into the bottom of the support column integrated on the panel and you can see that is solid metal as well. To assemble, lift the panel by the handle at its chin with your other hand supporting the column stand from behind, then seat the posts into the support column. Carefully tilt the panel and base back so you can access the set screw on the bottom and turn it clockwise to tighten until snug. This monitor is 41 and 3 quarter inches wide, 18 inches tall, and a quarter inch thick. It has a 45 inch diagonal giving it an ultra wide 21 to 9 aspect ratio. The bezels are super thin, though there will still be about a quarter inch gap from the edge of the screen until you reach the visible area. While the stand is not height adjustable, you can push or pull the handle to tilt the screen up to 22 degrees including a slight downward angle. On the front of the stand support column are the integrated I.O. and controls. There are two USB-A 3.2 ports, a headphone output jack, the Corsair logo, input toggle button, power button, and five-way menu joystick. Up, down left, right, and center click. At the back of the stand are two HDMI inputs, DisplayPort input, USB-C port with DP alt mode input, two additional USB-A 3.2 ports, a USB-C upstream port, and the power input. Just note that in order for input peripherals like wired and wireless keyboards and mice to work, the monitor's upstream USB-C port must be connected to your computer. Keep in mind, there's no VESA mount support or alternate mounting options, yet. The QR code sticker on the front of the screen takes you to a video on how to set the curve for the screen, which I'll demonstrate a little later. The OLED display, which uses an LG panel and has a max resolution of 3440 by 1440 pixels, has a pixel density of 83 ppi and 240Hz refresh rate. And while not 4K, its QHD resolution at this size gives you plenty of high quality screen real estate to work with. The response time is 0.03 milliseconds, and the monitor is compatible with both NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD FreeSync Premium. It also has a 3 year warranty. Let's remove the plastic film, plug this guy in, and fire it up. I'll connect the monitor to my PC using the DisplayPort, though you can utilize multiple inputs if you have more than one source device, like a laptop or gaming system. When powered on, a white LED illuminates just below the power button. It can't be turned off or dimmed in the settings. At its max resolution, while my camera is able to capture individual pixels close up, these aren't actually visible to the human eye, especially not if you're sitting the recommended 2-3 to three feet away from the screen. One of the things you will notice though, is when I switch between tabs with black and white backgrounds, the entire screen brightness shifts, which is most obvious if you keep an eye on the color of the tabs at the top of the screen. This is due to the brightness stabilizer setting in the OSD system settings, so if it bothers you, you can turn this setting off, but be aware that this will lower the brightness of the screen overall, which has a rated max brightness of 1000 nits. For content creation, I like to keep the screen as flat as possible. This keeps things like grids and lines looking straight and parallel, so I can see what I'm working with. Since the color gamut covers 100% of the sRGB color space, the color accuracy is awesome, and the colors are vibrant and rich. The 1.5 million to 1 contrast ratio also produces uniform, inky blacks without any hazy washout. Now this is the cool part. When you want to use it as a curved screen, just press the buttons and extend the handles on either side of the screen, then firmly grasp and pull them inwards towards yourself. 
It does require a bit of force and it feels kind of scary to do, but when you reach the maximum curve, you will hear an audible click from each of the handles, and that would be an 800R curvature. To hide the handles, simply press the button and push them in until they retract. To flatten it again, just press the handles towards the back. When the screen reaches its flattest setting, again, each side will click to let you know. You can also set the screen to lower curvatures as well by simply stopping at an intermediate point, and the monitor will hold its shape. So whether you like your screen flat, curved a lot, or something in between, you'll be able to set it up just the way you like it. This OLED screen produces zero backlight bleeding, nor any light halos around bright objects on dark backgrounds, making for gorgeous and immersive gaming, movie watching, and creative design experiences. However, this comes at the expense of susceptibility to burn-in or image retention. Corsair has thought of that too though, mitigating it with an OSD feature called Orbit, which when enabled, shifts the image on the screen one pixel per minute in a circular pattern. But if for some reason you do experience burn-in or ghosting, try running the image retention refresh from the OSD to try to get rid of it. Overall, this monitor delivers a hugely satisfying gaming experience, but it's also great for work, productivity, and media consumption, and gives you the flexibility, pun intended, between a flat or curved display at your leisure. The input toggle lets you change between multiple input sources quickly, and you can even display up to two inputs simultaneously with overlaid picture-in-picture -picture or side-by-side picture-by-picture. It's got a really large footprint though, so just make sure you have the space for it on your desk, and that you can position yourself far enough away from the screen for optimal viewing. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and join me next time.